Welcome to the Wrestle Fam Talk Show. This week we talk about NFL playoffs, the Bengals' big win, the college football championship, writers' top Mario characters, and our top 10 Royal Rumbles. Also, the top 10 AEW rankings will be covered throughout the show. I hope you enjoy. All right, we'll start the show off on a good note here. The Cincinnati Bengals picking up their first victory since 1990. Well, actually, the game was played in 91, but it was the 1990 season. First playoff victory. So it's the first one I've ever watched. I've always been a Bengal fan ever since maybe I was four or five. Yeah. You know, everybody has their own story about how they became fans to a team. I remember watching a game and then they broke the news. They're like, oh, let's switch to a different game. You know, someone scored and they showed Boomer Esiason and I saw the helmets. Growing up in Texas, I always thought it was just Washington and Dallas. <laughs> that was the only games that I ever saw. I didn't like either team. My mother raised me to hate the Cowboys, and I did. Still do. But I saw the Bengals, and I turned to her. I go, Mom, is that a team too? She goes, yeah, it's the Bengals. I go, that's my team. Little did I know that after I would say that, that this team would go on a 15-year streak of terribleness. Yep. We didn't we didn't have all the fancy channels and that, so you know you got your local games. They never showed the Bengals game. You know I'm there with the antenna trying to look through the snow fuzzy thing whenever they would play the Cowboys because you get the Cowboys game. Players like Jeff Blake and Darnay Scott and Carl Pickens back in the day. I was sit there excited on a seven and nine season or yeah. eight or when they went eight and eight one year. It's like oh my gosh. But I've sat through two and 14 seasons and one in 15, always in the top draft picks. And then they would pick Dan, Big Daddy Wilkerson. And they picked a, a running back out of, uh, was Kajana Carter out of Penn State one year. He blows his knee out. Wilkinson or Wilkerson, whatever his name may be. He didn't mount anything for the Bengals. So they would pick all these draft picks and they wouldn't do any good. They bring the new coaches in and then they would just be floundering then in 2005 you know the the year prior they upset the kansas city chiefs we were like way out of the playoffs we were just losing team we upset like the top team that year and then the following year we make the playoffs it looks like we're gonna win it and our quarterback blows his knee out in the first play of the game even though chad johnson made the catch it was like a big play against the steelers then there was the Early 2010s, the 2009 to 2013 or so, Ryder was born, and all of a sudden the Bengals make the playoffs that year. I'm like, he's my lucky charm. And they made the playoffs every year, and they would just lose in the first round. Yep. And then the time that I almost, I just wanted to quit. I wanted to quit being a, on. I remember this. When a, a fan. He's like, I'm done. When all the, the, they just lost their minds. We had the Steelers. We had the game one, a fumble, and then all of a sudden we just started hitting people in the head, pushing coaches, arguing with refs. The Steelers went down for 50-yard penalty to set up for a field goal. They didn't even have to do anything. The game was done and sealed. It was almost like, oh, we're not supposed to win. Let's just mess this up. But then on Saturday, for the first time ever, I got to see a Bengal playoff win. Now, in one of our... Wrestling reviews, I talked about, oh, yeah, you know, these people, they get all in their teams and thinking, oh, we are the champions. Remember I was saying yep. that, like, you're not on the payroll. I didn't care. I was on the payroll that day when yep. they won that championship. To me, that's what it was to me. It was a championship. I'm screaming out loud, we did it. Yeah. We did it. So you can understand where I was coming from, where all these other people, Cowboy fans, Patriot fans, they were always talking about how many Super Bowls. And the, But now I know how they feel. We got a playoff yeah. win. So I was part of that team. We won. I was a part of it. But that's my fandom. I do have a funny story before I end this segment. So it was around maybe fourth grade. We're having a play at the school. 
It's Mr. Touchdown USA. So the whole week I show up and I'm just a generic player on the on the in the background the whole time we we practice. Well, I say around 1989, my mom talked to my favorite aunt. I never met her, Aunt Lee. And uh, she would always call me up, give me good advice, and I would tell her how good I was doing in school now. So she sent me a Boomer Esiason outfit. I'm talking the plastic shoulder pads, the Bengal helmet, the Boomer Esiason jersey, the pads that go into the white pants. I had everything. I would dress up in it. I would play football in the living room against my pillows. And, uh, you know, just going to school in cowboy country, you never got to watch them, never got to watch the Bengals. I was always the outliner. Anyways, so I got this uniform. And that Friday night, we had practiced all week. The teacher goes, hey, if you have any type of football clothes or anything, you know, go ahead and wear it to the show. So what did I do? I went home. I told mom, I was like, let me get my helmet, the chin strap. You know, I dress all up. I show up as boomer size. And we show up, the kid that was supposed to be Mr. Touchdown USA, no shows the show. And everybody else is, you know, kind of wearing a shirt or some just show up with whatever clothes they were wearing for that, that day. I'm, I mean, this was not top notch production. Mm-hmm. I show up and I look spectacular. So she's like, well, you're Mr. Touchdown USA. I go, well, I have not been Mr. Touchdown USA all week long. I've been generic guy that cheers them on. So anyways, so now I got to do all these maneuvers that I've never practiced. So the song hits. Hip, hip, hooray for Mr. Touchdown. It goes, he can run, kick and throw. Give him the ball and just look at him go. And I proved them wrong that day. As the first attempt, I had to throw a football. So I had these kids running out. We were like in a cafeteria. They were running all through the parents. I just threw the ball. I wasn't even looking. Just chunked it up. It probably hit a, someone in the head. Then you run around in a circle, and I'm supposed to kick the ball. So my one buddy, he holds the ball, but it's weird. He puts the ball on the tip of his shoe and then puts his finger on it. But he lines it up as if I'm kicking left-footed. So I have no way to kick this ball really good with my right foot. You know, his body is in the way of where I would plant my left foot to kick. So I kick this thing, and the ball misses a teacher's head by a few inches. She has to duck out of the way. So if you can imagine the complete opposite of what the song is telling you of he can run kick and throw i was showing them that mr touchdown usa is not getting a scholarship no (laughs) one is looking at mr touchdown usa and if you think he's going to score a touchdown you are surely mistaken yep so that was my story of how i was mr touchdown usa in this Bengals outfit so i won the job because of my aunt lee sending it to me Mm -hmm. So funny thing, fast forward many years, I changed a lot of different schools. So I go to this high school and this one girl, she's sitting there and we're talking and she's like, brings up, oh, you know, I go to church. Have you ever heard of Anthony Munoz? You know, she, she goes to church with him and her daughter's. And Anthony Munoz is one of the greatest Cincinnati Bengals of all time. So I'm this new kid. She doesn't really know me. So she does. And I go, wow. I go, I've been a Bengal fan my whole life. You know? And uh, she must, she didn't believe me. Here we are in Texas. Yeah, you're a Bengal fan. She must have like, she must tell this story. And then all the kids act like, oh, they're Bengals fan to get the guy's autograph. But I really, I wasn't even trying to get his autograph. It was like, what, what is the... You know, what are the chances that I'm here and you know Anthony Munoz and he's one of my, you know, was on the team that I liked and she never believed me. So the girl that's out there, if anybody knows from the high school, can you tell her I was not lying? Yeah. I was a Bengals fan. I still am. She did not believe me. Like how could a Texas kid love the Bengals? It's easy. You hate the Cowboys? 
and you cheer for the team with the cool helmets. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. So, yeah, so lovely, lovely weekend of playoff football for me with a Bengals victory. Do I expect them to win another game? Chances are they won't. But if they do, I'll be back on here celebrating again like I'm part of the team. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, so we watched the college national championship game, football, Georgia versus Alabama. That was a good game. And it was a unique game for us. It's the first time you really sat down and watched a full game. First time I actually asked questions. I just acted like I knew I was watching, but I actually asked questions and found out how the game was really played and actually – uh, made the game look different to me, so I actually got to watch it and understand what was going on. <laughs> hey, you enjoyed for it the first time. Yeah, I broke down, you know, how many downs they have, the whole ten yard thing, that the lines on TV are not actually the lines on the field, which I think you already knew that. But yeah, some people don't. Some people are thinking, and I'm thinking, how do you, how do they paint them that fast? You know, but yeah, I broke down the, the down when they said red zone. You know, that's inside the 20 yards. You know, just things like that. A lot of penalties were called. So I got to explain, you know, what was uh, an incomplete pass or fumble or what was throwing away the ball or an intentional grounding, Mm -hmm. getting outside the pocket, showing you that, that aspect as if I was some guru of football. But if you watch it for many, many years, you pick these things up. You can watch any sports, especially if you just pay attention to the refs, you, you learn a lot. Maybe not nowadays, but back in the day, you could learn learn a lot from them. So. Yeah. And then the broadcasters being in-depth, you know, Tony Romo does a good job. I know he's standing out, but growing up with John Madden and uh, all those classic broadcasters, you do learn a lot. So the game started out, and right off the bat, we noticed that Georgia quarterback. Stetson oh. Bennett. I was sitting there thinking, I was like, of all the Georgia quarterbacks that there have been, this guy's lousy. He was. What was bad. it, that one? He was running, no one touched him, and he just dropped the ball? Yeah. There was a couple plays that I'm like, oh, my gosh, he almost lost the ball again. Yeah. I, I texted like my he buddy. Had these buttery fingers. Who's a Georgia fan. And I said, congrats on your victory. Georgia beat Stetson Bennett in Alabama. You know, <laughs> Stetson Bennett was the best Alabama quarterback I've ever seen. Yeah. And he plays for Georgia. But anyways, so it was a field goal fest to start it off with. Then Georgia scores. Alabama kicks another field goal. As, as it's going along, I'm sitting there thinking, is this going to be Alabama versus LSU from like nine years ago where it was just field goals? But then it picks up. The second half really yeah. picked up mainly the fourth quarter. They went off. Uh, there was the part where we thought Stetson Bennett really messed his team up when he, oh, yes. with the fumble, the guy nonchalantly grabbed the ball right before he was going out of bounds. Mm-hmm. Didn't even know he was making the biggest play of the game at that moment. But I give credit to Stetson Bennett. He stayed in there, made a touchdown pass, but boy, he made it a lot harder than what it, what it should have been. Mm-hmm. A lot of mistakes on his end, but, um, yeah, so that was it was a it was a memorable game to the point because I'll remember that game as the game where you kind of learned what was going on in a football game. But uh Yep. Now for your AEW Tag Team Rankings for Week 3. Debuting at the number 10 spot, Dark Order members Alan Angels in Dark Order number 10. Also debuting this week at number 9, the Varsity Blondes. At 8, the Gun Club. Staying at number 7, Red Dragon. 2.0 still at the number 6 spot. At number 5 is the Acclaimed. Number 4 
FTR, the AAA World Tag Team Champions. Number three, Darby Allen and Sting. Number two are the Young Bucks. Your number one contenders, Santana and Ortiz. And of course, your tag team champions, Jurassic Express. All right, Bryce and I are about to do the top 10 Royal Rumbles. Uh, with it being January and Royal Rumble season, I thought it would be a perfect time to do this. Bryce, go ahead and say hi so everybody knows you're here. Hi. All right. We're going to kick off our list. Now, Daddy made this list up. Uh, I know you've seen them all. We were just talking about them, and you were naming off all the win winners impressing me. And I'm like, save it for the show. Let them know you know. Because yeah. Bryce would go around and he would like test himself of the Royal Rumble winners. He would like know them in order. Yeah. And so, but let's see if you like my list. Uh, if you want to see any change or have any changes, let me know. Royal Rumble is your favorite match, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, I love Royal Rumbles. All right. So with further to do here, uh, number 10, 1994. Now, these are lists, they might not necessarily be everybody's top 10 or most exciting, but these are the ones I find myself re-watching. And 1994 is a perfect one. Mm -hmm. And it's not only just for the Royal Rumble. Check this out, Bryce. These two matches prior to it, you have the Quebecers defending the Tag Team Championships against Bret Hart and Owen Hart. Wow. That's amazing. And so this extended their feud. Remember at Survivor Series 93 where Bret Hart and Owen Hart accidentally ran into each other during the Survivor Series and Owen Hart got mad? Well, they made up and they're like, Bret was like, we're going to go, you know, I'm going to go for the tag titles. I'm, forget my singles championship. I want to go for the tag titles with my brother to make it up. Uh -huh. So during this match, guess what Owen Hart did? What? He done turned on Bret Hart. What? Yeah, kicked him in his ankle, turned on him. They didn't get the championship. Why did he um, want um, Bret Hart to lose? Well, the storyline was that he was the jealous younger brother. Does that sound familiar here in the house? Are you jealous of writers sometimes? You are? They can't, they can't see you nodding your head, but he's saying, yeah. <laughs> so they, he hurts Bret Hart. He hurt his ankle. I can't remember if Bret Hart had an injury going into it, but, but during the match, Owen Hart worked it over after, after the match, yeah. after they lost. And so, and then my other match on here that I really enjoy, have you seen this one? Yokozuna versus The Undertaker in a casket match. Did you ever watch that match? I don't know, but it uh, sounds cool. Yeah. So during this matchup, a bunch of bad guys come out. And they help Yokozuna because Undertaker's working Yokozuna over. And I'm telling you, it was like 10 guys came out. The Head Shrinkers, Crush, Jeff Jarrett, Bam Bam Bigelow, even Diesel. And he had to try to fight all of them. Undertaker, I'll try to pick up Yokozuna and slam him all over the other. Yeah, that would have been cool. He would just, they wouldn't have been able to get Yokozuna off of him. Yeah. So anyways, Yokozuna, there's just too many odds for the Undertaker. Yeah, and he should have, like, pushed Yokozuna into, like, the corner where everybody else was. And just... Yeah, though, but there were so many guys, they were all over him. You know how the puppies jump all over Gracie? Yeah. That's how it looked like. Where they were just mauling them. So, and then. If I was Undertaker, I'd probably call Kane. Yeah, this was before Kane. This might have even been before Isaac Yankum. Remember, Kane was the dentist that Jerry Lawler brought in prior to being Kane. He's the same guy. So, Undertaker disappeared for a while. They did this little video where he's going up into the sky and from the casket. But it was a cool match. So if you're even going to watch this Royal Rumble, watch it for those two matches prior because it leads to storylines. Yeah. 
And then the Royal Rumble happens. I like this match because the Steiners are in it. They're in early. So you get to see them interact with each other. This is the Royal Rumble where Diesel goes on a big roll. And uh, the great finish. Do you remember what the finish was to the 94 Royal Rumble? Bret Hart. Bret Hart and who? Shawn Michaels was one of the last four, but it was Bret Hart and Lex Luger where they went over the top at the same time and they landed perfectly on their feet together. And it was, was the first was tie. Bret, um, if I was Bret Hart, I would like at least have one foot hanging down. So if you have one foot touches the ground, you're still not out and stuff. Yeah, like what uh, Shawn Michaels did in 1995. Where he was just hanging and then the one foot touched. Yeah. So this was, I, I mean, I think it's an underrated Royal Rumble. I looked it up and I don't think a lot of people have this on their top 10 list, but it's a fun thing, fun one for me yeah. to watch. I find myself it's going like entertaining and like different to like the other Royal Rumbles because that was like the first one when. No one won and stuff. Yeah, they did a tie. You didn't know how they were going to handle it. And, uh, you know, Bret Hart came back from that injury. They weren't sure if he was going to get in there. And I think two Japanese wrestlers jumped Lex Luger before the Rumble. So the two winners were going in already banged up. Yeah. And so uh, during the whole thing, you're kind of wondering who's going to win. But uh, great. Well, they should have done like a, a one-on-one match. Bret Hart versus Lex Luthor and stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, they ended up going to WrestleMania 10, and uh, Lex Luger fought Yokozuna for the t- uh, for the championship, and Bret Hart fought Owen Hart. And then Owen Hart beat Bret Hart. Yokozuna beat Lex Luger because Mr. Perfect was the special guest referee. And then Bret Hart was supposed to fight Yokozuna at the end. He did. Roddy Piper was the referee. And Bret Hart ended up winning the title. So there was a rumor going around that Lex Luger went to a bar and he had a few too many drinks and he was bragging about winning the title. But that's just a rumor. No one knows if that's true or not. So to decide that, oh, he gave away, he was going to win, and they changed it up. But a lot of a lot of things going into that, that show there. So a lot of rumors and a great finish. They did a great job tying. They, they look like a legit tie. My next one on the list is the most recent one that's going to be on the list, and that's 2008. Do you remember who won the 2008 John one? John Cena? Yes, yes, he did. He made his return in this one, and that's pretty much what everybody remembers of this one. Mm-hmm. But I thought it was a big it was a big surprise. He wasn't supposed to come back as soon as he did. Uh, it started off with Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker. Undertaker. You remember that? Yeah. Because they were the last two of the previous one, and then they kick it off, and there was a lot of... at the start. Yeah. So it was almost like they were continuing a story from the year prior. But there's not much to say about that one other than Shawn Michaels, Undertaker, kick it off, and John Cena's comeback. So then we headed to 2007 as my number eight. And that one's really remembered for the last two. And you, yeah. you already knew who the last two was, didn't you? Yeah, Shawn Michaels and Undertaker. Yeah, Shawn Michaels and Undertaker. So they have like the best mini match yeah. as the last two. So it's probably the yeah. best ending of a Royal Rumble. I was rooting for Shawn Michaels. He's like my favorite at the time. Yeah, a lot of people yeah. like the Shawn Michaels on that one. I liked him. And so the Undertaker ends up getting Shawn Michaels... But to watch that, I would just fast forward to the last part and watch that ending. Mm -hmm. That's the most memorable part. So that's why it's on my number eight spot, because they did a great job there. Mm -hmm. Number seven, I have the 2000 Royal Rumble. You remember who won that one? Uh, um, The Rock. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, do you remember how he won it, though? What did he do? Um, actually, both of the, he actually, um, I think he cheated because it, both of his feet, uh, touched the ground before Undertaker's. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, before like, the big shows. 
Yeah, yeah, the big shoes. I so know. you said both of his feet yeah. touched, uh, touched the ground before the big show. He actually yeah. admitted that later on. But that was a cool finish where the big show looked like he was going to slam him. Yeah, and then he just uh, pulls the rope down and stuff. Yeah, he pulls the rope down. And uh, the Rock wins that one. So that's a, a funny one. I like it because yeah. you got to see all the the characters from that, the attitude error in that one. Yeah. So that was a good one. Number six, I have 1999. Who won that one? Vince McMahon. Yes, Vince McMahon. This one was a unique rumble because the big story was Vince McMahon and Stone Cold. Yeah, like um, at the end, Stone Cold would have won, but like Vince McMahon um, came in and tried to eliminate Stone Cold and won it. Stuff. Yeah, he had Jayden. help from The Rock. And a lot yeah. of people remember this one. Two major reasons. The I Quit match with The Rock and Mankind. Remember that match where The Rock handcuffed him and hit him in the head with the chair multiple times, crashed into the electrical box. <clears throat> but the story of the Royal Rumble with Stone Cold and Mr. McMahon, they fought the majority of the time outside the ring. They went back into the bathrooms and the and Vince McMahon had the Ministry of Darkness helping him, or the corporation. Yeah, they were in the hallways where people were walking and getting popcorn and stuff. Yeah, so they kept that match going. Yeah. You know, other people were wrestling, but you were just wondering, what the heck's happening with Stone Cold and Mr. Man? Yeah. And it ends up Mr. Man wins the Rumble, Yeah. which was uh, unexpected. Everybody thought Stone Cold was going to win. Yeah, I wanted Stone, uh, Stone Cold to win. All right, so... My number five is the 2005 Royal Rumble. Batista won that. Batista did. So this yeah. one is mostly memorable because they try to recreate the 1994 Royal Rumble where Bret Hart and Lex Luger went over the top rope together. The rumor is that they really didn't try to create it with John Cena and Batista. Batista was supposed to win. But he accidentally went over with John Cena, and they landed perfectly. Now, whether you believe it wasn't supposed to happen or it was planned, it looked perfect, too. They did a great job, just as Luger and Hart did. But instead of tying and just going to WrestleMania and both of them fighting the championship, Vince McMahon comes out at the end after they've hit the, the, the ground together. He throws his jacket down. And he storms to the ring and he goes to slide in and his thighs hit the ring and he gets in, he tries to stand and he just falls down and sits down and he's acting mad and he's pointing and yelling. He ended up tearing both of his quad muscles, which are the, I believe are the big thigh muscles. So he tore them and he was in a lot of pain and he couldn't, <coughs> excuse me, he couldn't stand. So, Sorry, I'm going to get a drink of water. <clears throat> Go ahead and talk, Bryce, as I paused here. And um, Vince McMahon was very hurt and stuff. Um, um, it took him a long time to recover, probably. Yeah, Dad, so it was funny. Him just sitting there. Imagine Daddy coming in and you and Ryder are doing yeah. something wrong. And I go to yell at you and I hurt my leg. And then I fall to the ground, and I'm like, you better stop doing that, but I'm on the ground. Wouldn't that look weird? Yeah. Yeah, so that's what it looked like. So, anyway, they so restart the matchup, and Batista ends up winning. So, the more me most memorable thing of that is Vince McMahon getting hurt, and then that the tie at the end. Yeah, and they just did a little rematch. Like, they um said it, like, they pretended it never happened and stuff. Yeah, they just said, <laughs> let's just restart the Rumble. But it was just both of them, though. Yeah, and they did a little thing, and he, he threw them over the what top. What if they restarted, like, the whole rumble and everybody else had to come back? <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that be weird? <laughs> yeah. That'd be a long pay-per-view. They're like, yeah. let's just start it over again. Redo. <laughs> and, like, uh, Stone Cold wins or something if he was in it. All right, so, number four. Another underrated Royal Rumble. The 1990 Royal Rumble. Hulk Hogan, Hulk Hogan his first win. Now, this is really memorable. I really like the start of this one because Coco Beware, I believe, starts with Ted DiBiase, and he goes for a dive, and TBiase 
gets him out and Marty Janetti comes out. He goes for a dive and Ted DiBiase gets him out. And then the first time, this was the first rumble and they stopped it after he came out. Usually on the early rumbles, you'll notice the only music that's played is the first two entries. No one else's music was played. But this one, they played everybody's music up to the number fourth participant, I believe, which was Jake the Snake. And the reason they did that is because Teddy Biasi and Jake the Snake were in a big feud. So Teddy Biasi is shocked to hearing that music. And then after that, they didn't play anybody else's music. It was yeah, weird. Because they wanted um, that to be like a big uh, celebration. Yeah, they wanted the crowd to go, oh, man. So Jake the Snake comes out. I love this match because of Macho Man's outfit. I really like his outfit. I like this match because of the the individuals talking before the Rumble. I believe Tito Santana. It might have been this one, I think. He, he kind of messed up. He goes, if I get in my way, I'm throwing everybody over the top. Almost like he's going to throw himself over the top, which makes sense because sometimes when wrestlers talk about the Royal Rumble, they talk about eliminating 30 other men. Well, there's 30 guys in the ring. You would mean you would eliminate 29 other guys, not yeah. not 30. You're throwing yourself out? And uh, Dusty Rhodes made a, a saying. He was like, I'm going to prove myself, Daddy. He was talking about the macho man. He goes, I don't care if you're there when I get there. I don't care if I got to wait on you all day because I'm going to prove myself. So him and the macho man were having a big feud at this time. Andre the Giant, this was his last rumble he was in, so it was fun seeing him in there. And then the big Hulk Hogan versus Ultimate Warrior clash. It was the first time they bumped into each other, leading to the ultimate challenge of WrestleMania six. That happened in this match. We got to see Rick Rude, big Rick Rude fan. The rumor is Mr. Perfect was supposed to win this match. But Hulk Hogan being Hulk Hogan, he goes, no, I'm going to win it. Oh, no. You know, growing up, loved Hulk Hogan. But then you find out all the rumors and stories about him. You're like, geez, dude. Like, Hulk Hogan, you did not need to win the Royal Rumble 1990. No one would think of you any differently. And this was the time where the Royal Rumble didn't get you a title shot. It didn't mean anything. He was the world champion. So him winning the Royal Rumble did nothing. Did nothing. He eliminated Mr. Perfect at the end, and it did nothing for anyone. Everybody was uh, screaming and, like, um, like, um, excited and stuff yeah like yeah you know looking back i was happy at the time i wouldn't be saying what i'm saying now i wouldn't have been like hey mr perfect should have won i was happy hulk hogan won yeah i didn't like mr perfect yeah you're not supposed to but if you look at it from you know behind the scenes or if you're thinking okay i'm making up you know this it'd be like me wrestling you in a and I win. Like, that doesn't make me look good, right? You winning would be, wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I would never say, oh, no, Bryce isn't going to win. I'm going to win it. That's what it kind of was like. So 1990 was a fun one, even though Hulk Hogan wins. Of course, in the moment, I was happy. I was ecstatic. But yeah, thinking back that, now. Like, um like three years after like the first Royal Rumble and he hasn't won one. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was the third one. He hadn't won one yet. All right, number three is the 2004 Royal Rumble. Who won that one? Um, Do you even remember? It was... It was Chris Benoit. Yeah, yeah. Chris Benoit won this one. He started at Number one, I believe, and lasted all the way through, eliminated the Big Show. That's the thing about the Big Show. They all, Every Royal Rumble and Battle Royal he was in prior to the Andre the Giant Rumble oh, thing that they have at WrestleMania, he didn't really win any of these Battle Royals. So they're always like, the Big Show's the favorite? No, he's not. 
I used to think, like Braun Strowman eliminates him and like stuff like that. Yeah. How are you the favorite if you've never won? I mean, when you first start out and you're that big, okay, I can understand it. But after 15 years of not winning these things, you I'm sorry, even though you're seven foot something, you're not the favorite. You haven't won. Braun Strowman at least won the the, the biggest like um uh Royal Rumble like in WWE. Yeah. Stuff. They're 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 the ones that are targeted. You're trying to get yeah. the big man out. But this was a fun one. 2004 was a great year of wrestling. Late 2003, early 2004. So I would say the back half of 2003 and the front half of 2004. Awesome. After that, it started going downhill. But this was a perfect time. This is a SmackDown in the middle of the great. Sm speaking of SmackDown in the middle of SmackDown, this was their their greatest shining moment. And if you want to just see a rumble, it's all about the action in the ring. This is the rumble for you. The 2004. Number two, 2001. Who won that one, Bryce? Stone Cold, Stone Cold won this one. This one, we're about to get to my number one, but this one is what the number one is to the attitude era or the recent era of that time. And what I mean by that is it was a loaded Royal Rumble. It had all the stars. Yeah, it had like Kane and like stuff like that. Yeah, it had Kane, had Undertaker, had The Rock, had Stone Cold. It had this guy who eliminated himself. Yeah, it had uh, Drew Carey. Now, yeah. here's a funny story. This happened in 2001. I actually got to meet Drew Carey in 2003 when I was in Iraq. I didn't yeah. Know that. Yeah. He came there with the the short woman from his show called Mimi and they came in and they shook our hands and we were all ecstatic. But this this Royal Rumble had Drew Carey in it. Yeah. It was a funny yeah. moment. It had the Hardy Boys. Yeah, I love the Hardy Boys. So they're like my favorite. And it comes down to rock, comes down to Stone Cold. They had a little moment there where they were bleeding and looking at each other. Kane is at the end. I believe Undertaker's at the end. I'm talking star-studded. Yeah. If you want to see a star-studded event. And action and stuff. Yes, and major action. This is the Rumble for you as well. Yep. That's the Royal Rumble you would want to see. That's right. And then, number one. The 1992 Royal Rumble. Ric Flair won that. Yeah, Ric Flair goes from number three all the way through. And again, for that time, star studded. Carrie Von Eric, Davey Boy Smith, mm -hmm. Shawn Michaels had just became the sexy boy. He had turned on Marty Jannetty. What did he do to Marty Jannetty a few weeks prior? Do you remember what he did? Um, he threw him through glasses. He, stuff. Yeah, he threw him through the barber shop yeah. window. Hawk Hogan, Savage, Sid, Sergeant Slaughter, Jake the Snake, Roddy Piper, Big Boss Man, Ted DiBiase. The list goes on and on. How did Hawk Hogan not win that? Well, this one was weird. So Sid eliminates Hawk Hogan at the end. What? And then Hawk Hogan does like a bad guy thing. Grabs Sid's arm and pulls him out so and, Ric Flair can win. And Ric Flair um, pushed his legs out and stuff. Yeah. So he tried to help Ric Flair, so um, he wouldn't win. That's what it looked like. It looked like Hulk Hogan was a sore loser, and that's how it came off. He tried to people let, were booing Hulk Hogan. He tried to let Ric Flair win, so um, Sid the bad guy won. Well, you, guess what? You would think Sid was the bad guy, but he was a good guy at this time. He was. Yeah, they were both good guys. They should have teamed on Ric Flair. That's what you would think, <laughs> but Sid throws Hulk Hogan out, which is per the rules. He didn't do anything wrong. And Hulk Hogan was a sore loser. And Ric Flair wins it. So if you look at all these Royal Rumbles, <clears throat> when they would go, oh, by the numbers. Remember how they'd go, oh, you know, the numbers. There was a point in time where no one from the number 30 spot had won the Royal Rumble. And there were like two or three guys that had won from like number one or number two or number three. How did they not win at 30? They're like, they got like all this energy and stuff. Yeah. They got all this energy. So you would have thought they would have won at 30 more than one or two or three. So it was very weird. And they tried to yeah. correct it at the end here. They've caught up. Mm -hmm.
but the way they were going, they just didn't make any sense. So yeah, like I, I would, I'd even be able to win a, a Royal Rumble with uh, like number thirty and stuff. Yeah, you would think. So, <clears throat> but, uh, did you like my list there? Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty cool. You remembered a lot of those. So yeah. Uh, so hopefully they have a good Rumble this year. I don't think we're gonna watch it. We may. I don't know. Yeah. But this was the top 10 Royal Rumble. So if you're out there, and hopefully I didn't ruin it by giving away the results. I was debating whether to say it or not, but we're talking about matches that are 20 years from now. If you're a wrestling fan, you probably already watched it. But these are the ones that I sit down and I rewatch when I'm a little bored. I like yeah. to watch that old wrestling. And I'll catch Bryce watching some matches yeah. as well. I'm right. going to probably watch uh, the, this year's Royal Rumble to see if there's any like old wrestlers that haven't um like done anything in a while and stuff yeah the surprise 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 entrance yeah like the hardy boys or something yeah well i don't think we're gonna see them (laughs) we might see them in an aew boy rumble before we see them in wwe (laughs) well thank you for joining me bryce you're welcome all right Now, the AEW women's rankings for week three. Debuting at number 10, The Bunny. Moving up to the number nine spot, Red Velvet. Staying at number eight, Riho. Moving up to the number seven position, Nyla Rose. Dropping one spot this week to number six, Chris Statlander. Moving up two spots to the top five, Serena Deep, staying at number four, Tay Conti. In the number three position, Ruby Soho. At the number two spot, Thunder Rosa. In your number one ranked contender, the TBS champion, Jade Carpia. Your woman's champion, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. So the NFL playoffs was this past weekend, and uh, you sat down and watched a little bit of it, didn't you, Ashley? I did. It was very exciting. I caught all the games, of course. Can't miss these games, these playoff games. Um, pretty much already went over the Bengals, so I won't won't beat that dead horse there. Uh, Bengals picking up a victory over the Raiders. Did get a little nervous at the end. Yes. Raiders did a great job of hanging in there. I want to start off, let's just start off with the big controversy, the Cowboy game. Mm-hmm. So 49ers jump out, look like they're dominating. Cowboys have a created turnover at the end, and then they're right back into it. Now, I know earlier it sounded like I was cowboy bashing and all that. I grew up not liking them. In my older life here, it's not like I hate the Cowboys or anything, but when I was younger, you know, just following <laughs> what I was told, like they're the bad team. You know, I yeah. just thought they were the bad guys. You know, I was a little kid. But uh, I like Dak Prescott. I know he had a lot of personal things. Uh, his brother passed away, uh, took his life, his own oh, life. Yeah. Uh, his mother passed away from cancer. Oh, wow. Uh, at a, I think he might have been in high school. I don't know. But uh, seems like a nice dude. Seems like an honest dude if we find oh, out yeah. after this uh, game. So I do like Dak Prescott. I uh, like him a lot. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott. They're probably going to be getting rid of that contract. You can find a lot of running backs that do, does what he does yeah, for a lot cheaper. Maybe they can even make, create an even better roster. The roster is great. Coaching, who knows? Uh, they, still haven't, they still haven't found that right coach. They haven't found one since Jimmy Johnson. Mm-hmm. But anyways, uh, back to the game. They create the turnover. They have a chance at the end. The 49ers... Tony Romo even was uh, pointing this out. They were allowing those outside throws on that last drive. Mm -hmm. So the Cowboys were able to march down into a good territory with 14 seconds left. But a lot of people forget, you know, I've seen people talking on all these shows that the 49ers didn't adjust at their defense where they had the the outside covered. So any throw Dak would have made – anything like that, there was a good chance that that player was going to be kept in bounds mm-hmm. or an interception. So I, I can understand why they took the rest of running 
Now, he might have ran too far, but what the controversy is is about the refs of they have to touch the football, and the one that had to touch it was the furthest one away. Yeah. Now, I'm not a Cowboy fan, but I'm a realist, and uh, you know I'm, I'm going to blame the, the refs on that one. You can't blame the Cowboys for the, the play they chose. It was the correct play, in my mind, to get closer just to have a better shot. Mm-hmm. At the touchdown, and and it's not like they lost the game because that because the chances of them completing this touchdown pass after this, let's say, went swell, they had one second left, chances were slim. But just like earlier this year, when I was mad when the refs cost us with the Bengals yeah. on a play, they 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 didn't give us that chance to see if if we could do it. So they need to really. There's a lot of thing you would think this billion dollar company, the NFL, kind of reminds me of the video games. How how are these mistakes happening? How are things like this still happening? It's like these are just easy fixes. Like there, there's answers for it. It's almost like like college football playoffs and things like that. It's like there's a simple answer to it all, and it's almost like they don't want to do it because they love the controversy. Yeah, they like when like what we're doing right now. We're talking about it. You ever notice like the concrete uh, championships? No one really speaks about. It. When I mean concrete, it's like March Madness, the World Series, the NBA playoffs, the finals. No one really talks about them all year long after it's happened. Yeah. Whoever won, won. But it always seems, especially with college football, there's always that what if, and I think they like that. And with the NFL, I think they like bad ref calls all the time in the playoffs. Because guess what? They're going to be in the news. Yeah. All year long. They don't care. They, they, who, what do they care? You're mm-hmm. going to watch it regardless. Mm-hmm. What do they care if the right team won or, you know, if it was a fair game? They don't. And that's what you, you're going to talk about. It. That's what they want. They want to be in the news. So why fix something? Why fix it where everything's perfect and then there's nothing to co- talk about? Then? Yeah. So I think they do it on purpose. But they this have one. have that drama. Yeah, exactly. It's not a. I hope everybody understands this. These sports, these events. These are not sport events. You want to watch sports? Watch your children play. Watch high school, possibly college, not somewhat college. But with them, it's it's a TV show. Yeah. This is a TV show. It's entertainment. This is not a true sporting event, per se. You want to watch a true sporting event? Like I said, watch your kids play. Mm-hmm. What you're watching on there is entertainment. You're watching a TV show. They might as well put Steve Urkel out there. Yeah. You know. Family matters. But anyways, but yeah, it's a TV show. I could feel for the Cowboy fans. I understand the hate. I can. I love that Dak Prescott was like, yeah, yeah good on that, those fans for throwing that garbage at the refs. Yeah. The refs, it, it's almost, it reminds me of the uh, the reporters and the, the anchors on these sporting news and on the news itself. News, there's no, there's no news. Again, no. it's a TV show. There's no news reported anymore. Same with sports. It's ideas or their feelings or their opinions. It's not mm-hmm. facts. It's not anything. These are TV shows to get you to watch. It'd just be boring if we just said the truth. Yeah. Now we got spiced this stuff up. Same thing with the refs. They want to get their name known. No one's going to know your name if you're doing the job good. Mm-hmm. They're going to get their 10 minutes of fame or 15 minutes of fame. Same thing with the ESPN anchors and Pick a pick a channel. It's all about them. I remember back in the day, it wasn't really, you know, they would do fun things and that, but it wasn't about now it's all they have their brand. Everybody has their own brand. They're well, yeah. generating more views for themselves. So you're not getting the honest opinion, the honest truth, the honest calls. Because everybody's got their own agenda. So the Cowboys lose this one, which I had predicted. I predicted the 49ers, but I thought the Cowboys had a great chance to win. This one was a tough one to call. Bills Patriots, boy, that was that was a snoozer right off yeah. the bat. I had project, projected the Patriots of winning. I had uh, I had drank the uh, Kool Aid of Bill Belichick. Yeah, I was like, you can't, <laughs> you can't go against them. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. So I still think they have a need at quarterback. Um, Mac Jones is their quarterback right now from Alabama, and I shouldn't be surprised. Alabama really doesn't produce top quality quarterbacks for the NFL. Mm-hmm. 
So I don't see why it would change now. There's three of them that were all together at one time that are starters in the NFL, and all their teams are kind of looking for another quarterback, except for the Patriots. They thought they had one. But if you look at it, Alabama is cornerbacks, linebackers, defensive line, offensive linemen, running backs, pretty much wide receiver, any other any other position you could think of except for a quarterback. That's the one thing that's a, a glaring weakness for these Alabama teams when it comes to the NFL. Now, during the college career, they do great. But in the NFL, not so much. Eagles and Buc- Buccaneers went as what I thought. The Buccaneers pull it out. And again, Tom Brady, it's so hard to judge him. Like, yeah. is he a great quarterback? And it's almost like, I wouldn't say he's a great quarterback. As in, what a quarterback does, you know, arm strength, you know, as talented, let's say. But he's a hard worker. Mm-hmm. He studies, makes the correct place, makes the boring place. Yeah. And then the leadership. If you look at his numbers in the playoffs, a lot of times he's terrible and his team carries him. Mm-hmm. He wins the championship. So it's almost like he gets too much credit, but then he doesn't get enough. It's kind of a weird thing. It's like, if you're looking at pure talent, no. But it's all the intangibles that you can't measure on a stat line yeah. that somehow he brings that energy, he brings that culture, they, they use that word, the culture, to a team, more practices. It's almost like he lifts up the other players. Yeah. So, I mean, you can't, you can't really judge him. If you judge him off of stats and just pure talent, it's not there. It's the hard work. It's uplifting everybody else to do their job. Yeah. And it's almost like, Everybody else wants to play for him. Like we gotta, we gotta make it up for Tom. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, how do you, how do you judge that? What do you want? Do you want a Dan Marino, who just went to a Super Bowl and, and lost just one time? But people say he, you know, he had the most talented arm. Same with Aaron Rodgers, but he won a Super Bowl. Yeah. Or do you t- pick Tom Brady, who just changes the whole team? He affects the whole team like no quarterback I've ever seen before. So. But here he is leading them over the Eagles on an easy win there. The Chiefs, they pick up an easy victory over the Steelers, although in the beginning it looked kind of bad. But that's how you know the Chiefs are right where they want to be. Because when they go on the runs, they usually fall behind and then just just come back with a steamroll. So it was perfect cheat, the Chiefs type of victory. And then the Rams, I thought it was going to be a closer game than what it was, but the Rams looked pretty strong. So that recaps those games. We've seen them. I'm sure anybody that's listening has seen those. I'm not going to jump too much in it. We saw it. There was not too many competitive games this week. This coming week, prediction time. We got the Bengals. We got the Titans. What does my head say? It says Titans. It says the Titans are going to win. The Bengals story, you know, story dream. Uh, What Cinderella story is going to be over. But what does my heart say? Always the Bengals. It says Bengals all the way. So who am I? I'd rather pick my team and lose than pick another team and win. Yeah. So I'm going Bengals on this one. We'll say it's a tight, tight game. Possibly low scoring. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully, if it's low scoring, man, that's a tough one because Derrick Henry's back. It's almost like, do I want to say if it's low scoring, it's better for the Bengals? I don't know because then that means your their offense is nullified. Ooh, I don't know how I want to score this. Do I want to just do 27-23? I feel that's like a middle of the road mm-hmm. thing. So we'll go 27-23 Bengals. I almost want to pick pick those weird numbers. I almost was thinking, I kept thinking of the number 19, and there was like a 19 on that thing. Oh, you know, yeah. just but it wasn't for their game, it was for a different game. It was almost like, you know, somehow those weird numbers that you don't think about. Yeah. But I'll just stick to the regular numbers because how they're just so hard to get to guess. Then there's the Packers and the in the uh, 49ers. I think the Packers have this that's, one. That's gonna be a good game. They're all good. I think the weakest game is the Bengal Titan one. Yeah. Uh, 49ers and Packers. I think the Packers win this one. Um, I think they'll go 34 to 20. I got them by two touchdowns, maybe. But who knows? But Aaron Rodgers with a week off in between. You got to go with Aaron Rodgers on that one. They already won. It was a tight game in early in the season that the Packers pulled out. Then you have Rams and Buccaneers. Very tough matchup here. That is. 
So I'm thinking, even though I just talked him up on Tom Brady, the Rams look pretty good. You can't bet against Tom Brady, but I'm going to. That's who I was going to pick. I was like, I think the Rams might. They look pretty impressive, but you can't go off of that. But Wow, maybe 37-34 Rams. Maybe a high-scoring thing. And the only reason I'm going Rams is questions on the Buccaneers' offensive line with injuries. Uh, some of Brady's favorite targets are hurt mm. out for the season. So I think just based off of that, I think a full-strength Buccaneers, I would favor. Yeah. But with these injuries and with the Rams' pass rush and uh, Tom Brady doesn't really respond well to those. Mm. If you look at the Super Bowl losses with the Giants defense, I think they're going to give him a little bit of fits, but he's going to hang in there. I don't expect a good game from Brady. I feel like the team's going to carry him. Uh, he'll make some big plays Probably. when he needs to, but I'm going to go Rams. So you pick Rams? I do. I'm sorry, I haven't even been asking you your your picks. What, with Bengals and Titans, who you got there? Of course, I've got to go with their Bengals. Okay, and who you got with the 49ers and Packers? I don't know. That's kind of a hard one, but... I'll go 49er. Oh, going with the upset. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I don't think you can go wrong either way. And the last one, the game of the week, I, the weekend, I think, you got you got uh, the Packers. No, it wasn't the Packers. I'm sorry. You got the Chiefs-Bills. Chiefs-Bills. Both mm -hmm. teams. That's, I don't know. Looking great. The Bills just won, didn't they? So. Yeah, they blew out the Patriots. The Chiefs blew out the Steelers. Oh, wow. This is a rematch from the AFC Championship game from That's last year. That's a hard year. choice. Yeah. I was almost going to say Packers-Rams was the game of the week, but that's what I'm well, thinking I'm the, the, the next week is. But You're going with the Chiefs? I'm going to go with the Chiefs. Yeah, I mean, how can you pick against Mahomes? Uh, yeah, I mean, I might go Chiefs as well. Like I, it's like I want to go Bills, but then I'm like, you know what? Mm, the Chiefs, is, I knew they played pretty good. So I wonder if this could be the highest scoring playoff game. It ever. could be. You know, I kind of want to go like, like shootout, like 50 48, something like that. Yeah. With these offenses, this potent offense. Uh, why don't you predict the score on this one? You got the Chiefs. I'm going like 50 48, which is crazy. Hmm. All right. I'm just going to talk so we don't have dead space here. Here, well, I guess we'll do 40, 48. 48. 42. 42. All right. You might have more realistic, even just by that small amount. We'll see. We'll, we, we'll see. Yeah, we will see. But I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. Yeah, I think so, too. Uh, but if one of those defenses shows up, that, that's the difference maker, obviously. Yeah. I think turnovers on any game would be a big difference, so that's something to look out for, too. But, yeah, so that was our playoff recap and uh, our predictions. So I can't wait. This is going to be a fun weekend. Yeah. It's going to be one of those pizza weekends with the, all that going on. Yeah, we should have some Snacks. fun food. Some fun food. Yep. I'm excited this, actually, because now that I know a little bit more what's going on with the football, I actually get to enjoy the game more. Yeah, I noticed you were uh, calling out things that you saw a lot more that made more sense. So, yeah. Why did they do that? You know, things that didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fun watching with you. So hopefully these uh, games will live up to the, to the hype. Exactly. Now for your AEW men's rankings for week three. Debuting at number 10. Pentagon. Moving up one spot to number nine, Darby Allen. Debuting at the number eight position, the returning Lance Archer. Staying at number seven, the FTW heavyweight champion, Ricky Starks. Also staying in the same position at number six, the interim TNT champion, Sammy Guevara. At number five, MJF. Number four is CM Punk. Number three is Malachi Black. Number two, Brian Danielson. And your number one ranked contender for this week is Adam Cole, Bay Bay. And of course, the world heavyweight champion, the hangman, Adam Page. <laughs> 
All right, Ryder. Now we're on to our top 10 Mario characters. We're going to talk about them this week. So starting off, what is your favorite Mario character? Luigi. Luigi? So when did you start watching Luigi? I like playing Luigi. You like playing Luigi? Which uh, video game did you play him in? Super Mario. Um, well, actually, no, it'll be Super Smash Bros. The Super Smash Bros. Yeah, I remember that game. So you really like playing as Luigi. Yeah. What uh, what color outfit do you like of Luigi? Um, any outfit it can be. Any outfit you like the regular green one? Is there any other weird ones? Yeah, like a Waluigi. A Waluigi. Yeah. So he's a bad guy, Luigi. Waluigi is, huh? Yeah, but Waluigi's not in Super Smash Bros. because because he's because he doesn't have a video game. Oh, don't he? Yeah, he just. He just beats in any video games in Mario. Okay. So he was in Mario Kart. I like being him in Mario Kart. Well, I know that. Mm-hmm. Well, he's not in Super Smash Bros. because he was not made in a, his own game. He never had an own game. He didn't have his own game. Like, Mario has a game. Yeah, well, Wario's own game. But yeah. Waluigi, he doesn't get the respect of like, yeah. Wario. All right, so... We got Luigi. We talked about Waluigi because he's the bad guy. Luigi is Waluigi in one of your, in your top ten favorites. Um, no, no, he's not. So it's in your favorites. It's in my favorites. That's right. So who's number two? Um, Bowser. Bowser. So you really like that bad guy, huh? Yeah. Why did it? <clears throat> why do you like uh, Bowser so much? Because he was in the classic Mario games, and then he changes a lot. Oh, he changed throughout the years, has yeah. different looks? Yeah, like, his, like, remember in the a Mario um, TV show? He was like a green Koopa Troopa Bowser. Oh, yeah, so he was more green than yellow? Yeah, because over the years, he gets much changed. All right. So we like uh, Bowser, because he's bad. I know he's he's in Mario Kart. That's the only Mario game I've really played. And he's in actually in Super Smash Bros. And Ultimate. All right, so and, he's in that one. Yeah. And he's what, always the main bad guy in all the video games, right? Yeah, he's the main character, the the owner of the bad guys. All right. Remember, he has Goombas, Koopa Troopas, and Piranha Plants. Oh, wow. And a lot. All right, so we have Luigi, we have Bowser, and who's number three? Um, Koopa Troopa. You like the Koopa Troopas? I like them yeah. too. So they're like the little soldiers. There's a lot of them. Yeah, they're there. the soldiers, just like Goombas. Yep. So they come after Mario. Are those the ones that you can uh, hop on them and they're turtle shells? Yeah, and then you kick them. They just you run into them. And you can kick it to the enemies, and they get they get hurt. Yeah, I've always liked them. So they're always yeah. working under uh, Bowser, right? Yeah. And those. they have different shells, just only green and red. Red, uh, the green ones can can fall down in the floor, and the red ones just go back and forth. They just go back and forth. Oh wow! So they they last a lot longer than the green ones, huh? Yeah, the green ones fall. The red ones don't fall because they go to the different direction. All right. So on Mario Kart, the red ones is the one that what you can throw, and it's already it's going to hit somebody. Yeah. And the green ones are kind of, you got to aim yourself. Yes. Well, okay. there, there's like a different one. It's like a blue one. It's supposed to go to the first place character. Oh, they, yeah. they get them get them hurt. I remember that one, too. That one's annoying, ain't it? Yeah, it is pretty annoying. Because you're always in first place. Yeah, and yeah. then the blue show comes and just gets you out. It's like, get, like, it's like almost like getting knocked out. Oh, wow. All right, who's next on your list here? Let's see, um, Skeleton Bowser. Skeleton Bowser. So he's a different type of Bowser, but he's yeah, he's skeleton. just a, yes, he is. He's a different Bowser. He's a skeleton one. Remember in New Super Mario Bros. Um, the Wii, the Wii U and the Switch. He changed, or actually, 
Yeah, because there's some people make mods of the Bowser, and then they make it as a bone Bowser. It's just custom. Oh yeah, and Mario Kart. Mario Kart has the skeleton Bowser in it. Oh wow, I didn't even know that. Remember, remember, it's skeleton Bowser and the Bowser's in it too. So you could have two people being different type of Bowsers. Yeah. That's pretty cool, then. It is pretty awesome. All right, so what are we at? We're probably at, what, number five, I would say? Five. All right, who's... Um, the... Mario. Wario? The, the or Mario? Other... Uh, um, let's just do Mario. You like Mario? Yeah. No, he's number five on the list? <laughs> yeah. Okay. What What about Mario? I know you like dressing up as Mario a lot. Oh, well, yeah. At Halloween, it was my favorite day. I was being with the... I was, my costume was a Mario riding a Yoshi. Oh, it, was, yeah. it was from Halloween. Uh, I saw I saw my best friend Colin. Mm-hmm. He had that one where it, you're walking, but it looks like you're on Yoshi's Yoshi. back. Yeah, it's like a fake legs. Mario's it's Mario's fake legs on it. Yeah, and Mario's always trying to save the princesses. Are there two different princesses? I see a lot of um, different princesses. Um, princess, princess. Oh wait, okay, princess Peach. And then Princess Daisy and um, Rosalina. And Rosalina. So there's three of them, huh? Yeah. There's Does different... Mario save all of them, or? Luigi saves Daisy. Mario saves Plus Princess Peach. Wait, Peach. And then Rosalina. It is in like a galaxy. Like, remember Super Mario Galaxy in the second one? Oh, okay. So she's she, kind of new. Well, well, Mario doesn't save her. She's with her because she it, because Mario's trying to save Peach. Okay. And Luigi too. Oh, he's trying to save everybody on that one. Yep. So Mario and Luigi have their own princesses. They they save. Yeah. All right. So who's the next one on your list at number the, six? Number six. Yeah. It'll be um Toad. Toad. He has a lot of colors like red, blue, and everything. Yeah, I think I even saw what yellow and then uh. Green and blue, actually dark blue. I meant. Uh huh. And light, really light blue. Is there and different purple? In purple too. Is there is there different toads? What was that one where he was like a miner? He he was oh, mining. Oh, that, that was toad. That was real toad. That was red toad. Oh okay. He's the miner. And he's what just looking for what's what's his job? What does toad do? He's trying to save his girl. Oh yeah. It was, I it's like. Um, I've just forgot the name. Okay, that's all right. It's so, just, just oh, Toadette. Is it Toadette? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's how I was trying to think. So the girl Toad, he's trying to save her. Is uh, Toad like Mario's best friend? Or um, Yeah. Yeah? Mario's um, um, best friend. He's trying oh, right. He's trying to save, save um, Toadette because she got captured from a... It's like almost like... Uh, it's like a... Oh, wait, a dragon or a bird? I I just forgot because I okay. played it for a while. So it's a been a while. So a flying animal has took Toadette. Yeah. And Toad's got to save her. It's not Bowser. Because, but it is in Bowser. Well, okay. at the end of the thing, they, they it's back to Super Mario 3D World. They, they get go back to the Mario 3D World. It, oh. it has the blue Toad in there. It okay. Being with Mario and Peach and them. Luigi. It was like a, it's like a, um, a level, a different level. So during the game, you kind of go to a level of a different game. They, within they, that you game? don't play as the characters. You play as, you know, Toad. Okay. So it's like a different look to the old game, but you're a different character. You're just Toad. Yeah, because because he they were too late because because remember Bowser captured the. You know, it's like a fairy. It's a green okay. fairy because he he trapped everybody, like every fairies in a jar. Oh wow! And so that's what Toad is going against, right? Trying and then to we played the normal video game. It be we're just already finished with it. All right. So what number are we at now? Is this number seven? Yeah. Okay. Who we got at number seven? Let's let's say um uh I know. A skeleton plot plot. Plow, um, I just I just call it plant. 
Oh, the, the piranha plant? Yeah, that's is what that I was the Is that the ones that kind of stick out and they try to bite you? Yeah. So there's a skeleton version of that one? Yeah, too? like in um, New Super Mario Bros. Um, 2. Oh, wow. What's with all these skeleton things? How did they become skeletons? I don't know. It's like underground, like like okay. in the second version of New Super Mario Bros. So I'm... It was like on the DS and now it's on a 2DS or a 3DS. It's a second. It's the second one, remember? You think they went to like Bowser's castle and fell into the lava or something? And that's I their guess, bones? I guess so. Oh, wow. I guess they fell in the lava. All right, so what's uh what's number eight now? How about um Yoshi? Yeah, I like Yoshi. Yeah. Talk about different colors with Yoshi. There's like red and yellow and um oh yeah, blue and purple mm-hmm. and a black one oh, wow. and a white one. Man, are they all brothers or is it the same Yoshi, just different color? It's it's their brothers. Yeah. The brother Yoshi. Remember, remember in, in um, new, um, Super Smash Bros, the first one from 64, like he gets out of the egg. There's his brothers. Oh, wow. The, there's like different Yoshi colors. That's their brothers. Do they ever hang out in the game? Um, No. no? They, remember, you had to change their colors. Oh, you get to change it. So you kind of pick who you want. It'd be cool if everybody could just be riding a different Yoshi. Yeah. That'd be cool. Like they were horses. Well, it happened in um, New Super Mario Bros. Wii. Remember, remember, you could ride the Yoshi's. Oh, okay. Remember. All right. They, and he and he can like what grab things with his mouth and oh yeah, spit like, them out or he, he 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 grabs the red apples in um Super Mario World, the original one of Super Nintendo. All right. Yeah, I always liked Yoshi. He was one of my yeah. Favorites. He is my favorites too. All right, and uh, number nine, is there another person you oh, like? Oh, yeah, it's going to be big. It's going to be a big one? Oh, yeah. Who's number nine? I know it's probably be the rabbits. The rabbits? <laughs> yeah. Remember in, um, remember the Mario's X rabbit? Remember, remember the, the Mario, the rabbits and Mario battle? Remember that one? Remember, oh, okay. remember that to beat the evil rabbits because... Because they got mixed up. I didn't even know that. It's is that that's is in the rabbit cartoons that we see, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So like it, it? it's in Nickelodeon. Well, it's a video game. Oh, those are fun. Mario. It's on the Nintendo Switch. That's a funny show. So these rabbits, they teamed up in the Mario because because the the you know like that you know it's just the rabbit just wearing the headset thing, mm-hmm. and it makes them um it's not. Making them control, it's like changing his body. Oh, and then the other rabbits are, like had like something like on their heads, and somehow the balloon they changed into a balloon rabbit and a Mario rabbit and a pr- 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 you know a Peach rabbit right. and then a Luigi rabbit and and it'll be a Yoshi rabbit. Oh wow! So they all changed into the characters, huh? Yeah, that's cool. I gotta watch that. I didn't even. No, that was no. It was like a video game. It was on the video game. Yeah. I gotta find that. So, oh, I didn't even know that. Uh, so let's finish it off. What? Who is number ten? Number ten. Let's see. I wish it'd be Tuna and Ninja Turtles. I wish Mario can be with Tuna and Ninja Turtles. That's I wish. Oh well, yeah. Well, I want to say this way. I'm thinking first. Yeah, go ahead and think. There's a lot of characters here. Uh, there's King Boo. Are you oh, a fan King of him? Oh, King Boo. Let's do King Boo. You like King Boo? Cause I was he was in um, Luigi's Mansion. That's where he came like, on the scene? Yeah, Lu- he was Luigi's like, Mansion. he was in, um, he was on the, oh wait, Nintendo Cube. He was, that uh, that started Luigi's Mansion. Okay, so the GameCube? Yeah. Okay. The GameCube, that's what I meant. Yeah. Nintendo yeah. GameCube. Oh, you right. had it before? Well, you cannot find the controller yet. Yeah, I think a dog had chewed uh chewed the controllers up. Yeah. But I it, had a lot of fun with the GameCube. Well, I out. have it in my room in my closet. Oh, remember? Right. Remember that you I, I didn't notice there was a GameCube in there. Yeah, it's in there. Once we find the controllers, maybe we can find that Luigi Mansion with yeah. King Boo. I don't know King Boo, he's on Mario Kart too, isn't he? Yeah, he's in um the the Switch one, the 
Mario Kart Deluxe. All right. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. That's I mean. Oh, he's in the Deluxe one? Yeah. So he wasn't in the regular one. Yeah, he was not you in there. You get the Deluxe version of Mario Kart. Yeah. King Boo, he's a bad guy, right? Is he bad? Yeah, he is, yeah. He, is, he is a ghost. Remember, he's a bad guy. Okay, for Luigi Mansion. And he has the, there was the Luigi Mansion 3 on the Switch. All right. Well, there, there you have it. Ryder's top 10 Mario characters. I learned a lot from this one. Yep. We'll have to find out some more about all these other characters that you oh, may like. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thanks for listening to our show this week, and we hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.